Let's take a look at our About Users section right now. When we hit this About section of our website and the About component, we're going to grab all of this information about our users from the ng-on-init function. Let's talk about a different way that we can get data into our class without doing it from ng-on-init. And this is going to be really familiar for those of you that come from ng-route or ui-router when we're routing Angular 1 applications. Now the idea here is that we're going to pass the information in using the router so that our component will have all of the information it needs when it gets created. It doesn't have to go out and get information after it instantiates. It already knows it has access to all of that info. Let's take a look at our router. We'll go into the about routing. Here we have the about component. We can do something like data and we'll pass in data here. We'll do message and this is my data message. This way when the about component gets instantiated, the router will automatically grab all of the data and add it into this component so that we have access to it. This way the about component knows what it has already and it doesn't have to go out over the wire over an HTTP call and go grab new things. Let's open up the about component and let's see how we can grab that. Just like in the about user component, we use the activated route to grab information about the current route. We're going to do the same thing here. At the very top, let's import the activated route from the Angular router. Let's pass this into the constructor. Private route is activated route. And then let's do this.route.data and we'll do a for each data and let's see what's going on in the data. Here on the about section, we have the data, which is message. This is our data object. It was automatically passed to the about section before we even got to the component. We're going to do the same thing for this, this.service.getUsers. Instead of grabbing the users after the component is activated, we're going to make sure that the users is part of this data section. That way we can just do this.users is equal to data.users. And that way, our component isn't really worried about having to go grab information out of the service. It just knows that it has access to that information already. Now, it's important to note that both of these techniques, doing this using ng on init and doing this where we grab the information from the router, they're both very valid. And we'll talk about different reasons why you would want to use one over the other. The main biggest reason is that if you have an ng on init that is starting to get pretty large, it makes sense to move all of that logic away from your class and into its own service. We're going to keep the idea of having skinny controllers from Angular 1. We're going to have skinny, clean classes in Angular 2. If you remember from UI Router and Angular 1, the way that we passed in data through the route itself was resolve. So data is just passing in information that we already have, like strings and stuff like that. If we want to use a HTTP call and go grab information from somewhere, we'll use resolve. And right now, we don't want that message there. We'll keep this blank, and then we'll go create our own resolve service. In Angular 1, this would have been users, function, and then we'd pass in the function. We would do something like user service dot get users, and then we would return those users here. But in Angular 2, we don't really want to do that. We don't want to complicate our router code. Let's move all of that logic out into its own service. So we'll create a new file called about resolve service. And since this is a service, we'll import injectable from the Angular core. Now the Angular router is what's going to provide the resolve interface. So we'll use import resolve and the activated route snapshot. And we'll pull that in from the Angular router. And let's start this. We'll do injectable. We won't have anything in there. We're going to export class about users resolve. And we're going to implement the resolve interface and we're passing back a user. 
since we're using that user class there, we're going to import user from shared models user. And since we're grabbing users, we'll also need the user service. Let's do a constructor so that we can use that service. Resolve is the function that we want here, the method. Since we are implementing resolve, this about users resolve will throw an error unless we have this resolve method implemented. So if we delete that, immediately we'll see there's an error here and it knows that we need the property of resolve in this class. So let's implement that now. Resolve will pass in the routes, which is the activated route snapshot. And we'll return this.service.getUsers. And since this is a promise coming from our user service, we'll do that then users and we'll return the users. I know this seems like a lot of code for just getting information out and into the router so that our component in the class here, our about component doesn't have to deal with this in the ng on init. But when you have information that is a little bit more complex than just a one liner, this really makes sense that you would pull it out of the component and move it into its own resolve. Another really big benefit of doing it this way is we don't want to show the about component and then maybe this HTTP call to go get the users actually takes a long time. We don't want to show a blank information here. We want to make sure that this class and this component don't get created unless we have that information. This makes our application feel faster to our users since they don't have to wait for a blank screen while we're going out to get data. We have this new service, and since it's a new service, we want our application to use it. It has to be registered within our about module. Let's import it. And it's a service, so we're going to add this to the providers section. Now that we have access to it in this about module and the about section of our site, we can finally use it under the about routing file. So copy this import. We'll go into about routing, paste that in, and then we'll use about users resolve and pass that into here. Now when this about component gets instantiated and brought into our app, the Angular 2 router is going to look at this and say, hey, we need to grab everything inside of resolve and we're going to look at this about users resolve to go get information. Then we're going to make it available to us in the about component.ts file. Under here, we're going to make sure that we have it. We're going to do it exactly how we did earlier for just normal data. The resolve information gets passed into the data object, this.route.data for each. And let's make sure we have the users in the object here. All right, looks like we have all of the users we need here, exactly how we wanted it. Let's refactor this. We don't need to do the ng on init grab anymore. So we're going to switch this up into this.users equals data.users. And TypeScript is throwing an error here. It wants to know some type safety things. So we'll give it a little type safety. We'll say data has to be an object of users and it's going to be an array of users. This is really cool because now we have self-documenting code, which is really what TypeScript likes to promote. We have data, and we can easily see that, hey, this data will always come in as users, which is an array of users. That way, if anybody else comes into our application to work on it, they'll know what comes out of this data section. We can simplify this further. We'll forego the expansion there. And now we have our one-liner back, but we don't need the user service anymore. So we'll delete that there and delete that there. Let's make sure our app is still working. We'll go to the contact page. We'll even refresh, go back to the about page. And all of our information works exactly as it did before. Right now, there's no real difference in how it looks and how it feels. But as our application gets bigger and our calls in ng on init get larger, it makes sense to clean it up so that it's a one-liner no matter how much data or how much manipulation we have to have. A really cool thing about this also is in our template, we did an ng if users because 
when this component gets created, there are no users. And then on ng on init, it'll go grab those users. We don't have that problem anymore. We'll always have users when this component gets created. So we don't need that ng if anymore either. Save that. Let's look at our app. And everything is working exactly how it was. Using either resolve or using a service inside of ng on init are both valid. It really all depends on your application and how you'd like to maneuver your data around. 